Big Keith Stone, roll the six. For the dime moves in the lokes, for the six foes on spokes, for the OGs that did a dime, came back around on parole, for the homegirls with the scrap game, little homies that game bang, from Pelican Bay to YA, rearrange your mind frame, yeah I know what you been through, uh, shit you had to go tend to, your mama gave birth on the turf, I know them killers you kin to, this for the lost generation, broke as hell man. A lot of, you know, lifting weights and I was on sport, they start calling me Big Miz. Original stutter box, East Side Five, who's Pablo Bishop, Mid City Gangster Bloods. Yeah, Mac, video, you, video, you, you know, this is for sure, for sure. Yeah, Mac, video, you, video, you, open your soul. This is for so the beginning. Hit you with the questions first. Uh, where were you born and raised at? I was born in St. Louis, Missouri. We moved out here, and, uh, I was 12 years old when we moved out here. California. And why did your family move out here? Uh, my grandfather had died and my mother came out and shortly after that uh, they came back. Well, we came out here for the funeral and we wound up staying. And what was the reason why your family came out here? My grandfather passed. And when you guys came out here, where My you... grandfather was out here. He was living out here. Where was he living at? Uh, on the east side. 7-Eleven East 98th Street. And that's where you guys landed when you all first came? No. Where'd you guys land at? We landed on 10th Avenue. 10th Avenue and what? 10th Avenue and 68. And that was 1968. And what schools did you attend when you landed out here? The first schools? The first school I attended, where we attended, uh, was Manchester Elementary. How's that? Uh, <laughs> We came out here during the summer. My mother and father uh, separated and we moved on Menlo. We moved into a house on Menlo. My father still stayed on 10th Avenue. And when you, when you came out here, who did you come out here with? Me, my brothers, it was me, Carlos and you. Baby Face and Baby you. Those are your only brothers? Those are my only brothers. And I have two cousins, Rodney, Big Rip, and Quentin, Big QT. So your father lived on 10th Ave. What did, what, did, what did he do to support the family? What was his profession? He worked at General Motors. He worked at General Motors. And in 72, he, uh, Decided he wasn't going to work for anybody. He quit General Motors. He went to school at a trade tech and took up accounting. Once he graduated, he quit General Motors and started his practice. So when you guys landed on 10th Ave, describe the neighborhood for me. What it compared to Missouri? Uh, it was a very nice neighborhood. Whites, blacks. Uh, I don't remember any age, but it was twice that stayed in the, in the area. And manicured lawns. I mean, it was a beautiful neighborhood. So you wouldn't have considered it 10th Avenue a ghetto in 1969? No, no definitely not. Definitely not. When, when did you see the turning point on 10th Avenue? Um, probably in the late 70s, early 80s. So when you was there in the early 70s, late 60s, early 70s, was there a gang scene in the Crenshaw district at that time? Were you aware of the gangs? Uh, yes. What gangs was up, up and running during that time? Uh, West Side Cribs, uh, Bishops. And those were the two gangs in the Crenshaw district? Yeah. There was some DMGs and, you know, Seattle. But we were the dominant, we were the dominant ones. So. so so when you went to Crenshaw, I came across an article that they called Crenshaw back then, Fort Crenshaw. 
and, and, and I found some yearbook pictures on you. You were there like 72, 73, 74. Yeah. Why did they call Crenshaw Fort Crenshaw when you were going there? What was going on at Crenshaw? Uh, BNGs was there. And we were there. We weren't that big then. It was, it was a handful of us. We did everything in a group. Van Ness boys would come up there. We would fight. And, you know, they'd run. And, you know, security would come out. Yeah, everybody's got it. So when you say we, are we talking about before the Rolling Sixties form? Or are we talking about... No, this is this is after. Uh, after the Rolling Sixties. Before, it was five, six syndicates in the ran that school, basically. Yeah. So who was your crew at Crenshaw? Who was your running mates? Who were your? I ran with I ran with them syndicates because at that time, by me being the oldest, it wasn't too many crips up there, but the syndicates, five six syndicates, and uh, you know James Looney, Eddie Robinson, or those are the ones I ran with mainly Looney. So you, you didn't run with the, the, the Maurice Duckets and the Carl Duckets, Duckets, Duckets and, nah, the, and, nah, the, and nah. the bad newses and all that. The bad news. They didn't mess with Mark. Mark had a reputation that followed him, you know. Marshall, Mark, Marshall, Mark was down in the yards. Duggy played basketball. Maurice, he was still good. Carl wasn't there yet. That was my first year. Now, that second year, in 73, with uh, Carlos, Duggy, Fred, Kyle, that whole crew hit Crenshaw. And that's when we literally took that school. So look, earlier, you mentioned that the Crenshaw district had West Side Crips and bishops. Who, who were the bishops? We were. Who, who's we? Me. Uh, me. It was Babyface. Baby you. Baby uh, a cat named Iceberg. Uh, it was Squally. Well, Not Sharif, sure rest in peace. Rip. Um, Ray Ray, Raymond Lyons. You say Squally, you talking about Squally Davis? No, no. His name was um, uh, Carl Fritz. He stayed right next door to, uh, to Ma well, to Red, to Man. What to Man? What, 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 he moved to that neighborhood. He stayed on 8th Avenue. 8th Avenue what? 8th Avenue uh, High Park. And what made you guys gravitate towards Lucky? Uh, Lucky was cool. And we just, I don't know. We had some guys coming over from the east side. Uh, Bobby, Jimmy, Space Ghost. These guys were coming over from the east side because when, when they homeboys had moved on the west side, named Lucky, had moved over to the west side, and he had actually become part of us at the same time, being part of them. And they were East Side Bishops, they were known as East Side Bishops. Uh, but the problem was going on, we, so a lot of us uh, uh, kind of gyrated to the guys from coming over from the East Side the Bishop, Jimmy, Bobby, and Space Ghost. So eventually what happened was, before we started the West Side Bishops. Now that didn't last very long. We were searching for an identity. We were brothers, I always tell we all got duped. Did, 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 did Lucky go to Crenshaw with you guys? Yeah. He did? Well, we thought we, uh, uh, you know, because we came at him, well, we can be Bishop Cripps. And what was Lucky's response? Yeah. <laughs> okay. That didn't work out, though, man. Uh, we went to a meeting on the east side. Because we was riding, we was riding, running around in the neighborhood, writing on the walls, Bishop Cripps, spray paint, Bishop Cripps. Oh, you know who I forgot, uh, who you fucking down to? Who? Lafayette and Kenny on oh, third. Oh yeah, uh, yeah. Um, uh, Kenny Stratton in. Yeah, Kenny Stratton on third. Um, right in front of me. Come on. Uh, uh, but Mark Bolden. Um, Troy Hicks. Yeah, Troy yeah. Hicks. Troy Hicks. So, so you 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 guys were actually mingling Hello. and going to the East Side. With we went. We would go over there for meetings. You know, when they called us over there for a meeting. But you know, they would come to the West Side. Uh, they would come to the West Side. And you know, hang out, but mainly we did our own thing because we hung out with the Crips that was there. So, so look, what 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 year were you guys bishops? We was bishops in seventy one, seventy two. Though it may have been short lived, if true at all, according to a nineteen seventy three newspaper article 
A member of the Brams was cited as saying the Brams, the Van Brams, and the West Side Bishops had joined together to commit robberies. I remember because me and Mark was at uh me and Mark was at Horseman. My last year at Horseman, 1972. We had a uh, uh, cadets. And I joined the cadets to get a pair of khakis. Get my dad to buy a pair of khakis. Boy, you bought me a khaki suit. Why did you have to do all that to con con convince Pops to get you a khaki suit? Because he didn't want me wearing khakis. I wore floorsims and slacks back then. So khakis was already considered the gang attire back yeah. then? Khakis and crocus sacks. Khakis and crocus sacks. <clears throat> so you guys were bishops from 71 to 72. Yeah. Well, it wasn't even a year. It wasn't, wasn't even a year? year? No, it wasn't even a year. I left Horseman and went on to Crenshaw High School. We started my first year at Crenshaw. It was like 1972, 1973. Now, at this point in time in the neighborhood in which I was born and raised in, it's known as the 60s, uh, it was a neighborhood that was fragmented with different gangs. And I, what I mean by that is this here. It wasn't one particular game in that, in na in that neighborhood at that point in time. Uh, what you had, you had some guys who were Crips, West Side Crips. <clears throat> and at that point in time, those of us, we started having conflicts among ourselves. This was a couple of guys having conflict with this group. And then we had uh, the Crips <clears throat> having conflicts with us. Also, we had the Van Ness boys who were lo located on the other side of Slauson. Now, most of us who were born in the city, we were born and raised and went to Van Ness Park from little kids went up until uh, junior high school, high school. Uh, most of us, all uh, most of us on the other side of Slauson never became Van Ness boys, although we were good friends with them, uh, hung out with them while we were in the park. We got along well with them. But what started happening in high school, or late junior high school, we started having conflicts with them. I cannot say specifically why we started having conflicts with them, but we started having conflicts with them. Uh, we were having conflict with some of the band of, some, some of the Crips in the neighborhood. And also there was a game known as the Chain Gang, who were older, but we started having conflicts with them because we weren't part of them. Yeah. Well, it wasn't even a year. It, it wasn't even a year? No, nah, it wasn't even a year. So, so, so when they found out we was claiming Crips on the end of that, we went to a meeting. And uh, they tried rushing. The East Side Bishops. Yeah, the East Side Bishops. What you mean they tried? Either they did or they didn't. Uh, we ran. <laughs> <laughs> I ran. Uh -huh. We ran. And that was the end of the bishops on that the was West the Side. End of the bishops on the West Side. But what about Lucky? He, Lucky's still in the turf, though. No, but Lucky, Lucky moved. After that, Lucky moved. Whatever happened to Lucky? You know what? I don't know. I haven't heard anything about it. So, so, so back to the Crenshaw days. I came across an article you guys probably don't know about. And it, it basically talked about Fort Crenshaw and the gangs at Crenshaw. And it was basically the bishops and the Brims together. The, the bishops of Brims and Van As Brims against the Crips at that time. Is that something that you remember? No. Were you guys ever allies with the, with the Van As boys? No. no. As bishops? No. Were you guys ever allies with the Brims? No. Okay. We knew them. We were never allies with them. All right. So when you so when you guys canceled being bishops in '72, what took place after that? We became uh, underground. We became underground crips. We became West Side crips. Then we became underground crips, and just searching, searching for an identity. When you say we, you talking about the same circle? So let me ask you this, back back, back to when you said the Crenshaw District during that time only had West Side Crips and Bishops. Who were these West Side Crips in the Crenshaw District? Do you know them by name? And where were they located at? The West Side Crips over there were... Hmm. Well, we talked basically... Oh, uh, wait. Perry? Let me correct that. Perry was playing the Crips. Perry was a uh, West Side Crip. That was Sneaky T from West Side Crip. Perry, they, Squally, Loopy. Yeah. They was, they was kind of like the godfathers of the hood. They were older like, than us. Yeah, for us, like, when the Raven Pots and them, they was like 6'5". 
them was kind of like the hitters, but they were they weren't really from sixes though. It I'm, was West Side Chris oh, six five. I'm, I'm trying to stay on a timeline, okay, so I'm, okay. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna get all into okay. that. I'm just trying to lay the foundation on that first. Right. When you when you when you mention Squally again. You know, there's two squallies in the yeah. '60s, so kind of distinguish them, so so we know who they who you're talking about. So when when you mentioned West Side when Crips, I say squally, I mean uh, Sheree Davis. Rest okay. In peace. Are you familiar with Squally Davidson? Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. You resting in peace. Okay. And he was one of those original West yes. Side Crips. I remember Carlos and Squally had a fight on two that Over what? <laughs> Squally called him a punk. And at that time, what was Squally and what was Face claiming? During Face was claiming uh, we was trying to start. We was trying to start the sixties. Like that. But what eventually happened was the leaders and the bishops faded away. The Crips maintained, stayed in the neighborhood. But what happened was those individuals who were Crips and those individuals who were Westside bishops and part of these all came together under one umbrella. And that umbrella became the one of 60 Crips. What made you guys hang out on Arlington? What was going on at Arlington that made you guys gravitate over there? Because you're off of 10th Avenue. So what made you guys go on uh, Arlington. Big Rick. That's it. That's Big it. Rick. Big Rick. Was Big Rick a part of you, your guys' original Bishop crew, or he was no. separate from that? Uh, no. He wasn't part of that. So, so, so. Face what? went to camp and met Rick. Face met Big Rick in camp. And when they got out, uh, we started going over on Arlington. See, but see, I hear a story too. This that Faith tried to rob Rick. That's how they became close friends. Cause Faith jumped out the pillow, out the uh, out the bush and something with a pistol tried to rob Rick. But it didn't go down. They end up, you know. That's what Rick got to take him. That's the story he tells. You know what I mean? I don't know about but, that. Yeah, it could have. I mean, yeah. You know. Cause I remember, cause like, I know they met in camp. Yeah, yeah, I know. Met Mouse in camp. Yeah, all of them. We met all of them. All of them came yeah. together in camp and found out we stayed in the same hood. Yeah. When you say mouse, who are you talking about? Motor mouse. Oh, they all met in camp. Yeah. Yeah. Tell me about the White Castle. You, what you mean, White Mountain? White, White, White Mountain. White, White Mountain. Uh, White Mountain was the headquarters, but that's where that's where we supposed to get hamburgers. Hang out because it had like a, like the little section that's kind of inside with Mitch. So we used to go in there, and shoot dice, have meetings and stuff like that. And it was on Florence, so we could see all the activities going down Florence. You could watch out for the Eaglewood family, see if they come across Fifth Ave, uh, coming coming down that way. You know what I mean? It was just, and they had good food. Well, you know? yeah. let, let, let me let me I'm gonna focus on you real quick, real quick, Stone. I want to get you up to speed. So when we get into the whole roll of 60s conversation, you guys are on the same page. Because right now we're kind of like in that phase where he's leaving the bishops and they don't know who they want to be yet. And, and what's your family's origins? Where do you guys come from? Texas. And, and what year and what made your family migrate to California? My well, moms came out of here, I, I don't know what year. She came out of here probably in the 40s, 50s, I don't know. You know what I'm saying? But I was born at General Hospital in 1960, right? But I, like, I joke with everybody. See, I, out, of, out of my brothers, I got kicked out the house when I was six weeks old. Because when I was six weeks old, I was on a train going back to Texas. So I didn't, I, I stayed in Texas forever. My brother and them grew up on Second half, and you know what I mean? I came back, uh, uh, when I came back, it was it was seventy the summer of nineteen seventy. I spent that seventy that summer seventy seventy one, right? So about seventy seventy one six nine. But then the following year when I came back to state, then that's when they was like, man, you going to horse man? That's a gang called the Crips and da da da. So they had all the scary stories. But you know my brother knew everybody them Rick them. You know what I mean? I was just the guy from Texas, right? Mark Bold and them stayed down the street. It was just a different kind of atmosphere for me. What, what year did your family land on Second Avenue? 1965, right after Ross Wright. They uh, they were they were just still Avaline and like a hundred and something. 
And then after the watch riot, Bob's then moved on uh, second half, possibly. You know, hey, they went from the they went from the Pueblo to the east side to second down. So, what elementary schools did you go to? I didn't go to North California Elementary School. My first school was the seventh grade at Horace Mann. I went to uh, a school in Texas until I hit here. What, what, what year were you at Horace Mann? I was at Horace Mann the year from 72 to 73. From 72 to 73, I, I graduated uh, Horace Mann in 75. So you was there from 72 to 75? Yeah, and 71, 72, 72, yeah, 72, 73, 73, 74, 74, 75, 75, you, you, 76. You started at Crenshaw, there. right. So when you was at Horseman, what was going on at Horseman in the early 70s? Well, see, when I came out here, see, everybody knew my brother. They didn't know me. I had a Texas accent, right? So it, that's what Rusty, Houston, them all, them used to be at Crenshaw, mold them. So, you know, I'm really kind of like just... You know, just navigate, right? So it was situations where I didn't know to get there, right? You know, so a, a dude uh, asked me to loan him a dime. So I loaned him a dime. I didn't know he was so called jacking me, right? So did the next day come loan me a dime? You know, I'm looking to get a nigga dime. So he came back again, said, Loan me a dime. I said, Man, you owe me 20 cents. He said, What you mean you owe, I owe you 20 cents? Hey, man, I took that. You ain't take nothing from me. So now, now I'm scrubbing, don't don't nobody know me. So then they tried to pack me out a couple of other dudes, a uh, Rip and Ray Ray. You know, they knew my brother them. They were like, that's Alex's brother. You know what I mean? And then like Ray Pace and whatever. So once people knew who my brothers was and the people that uh, from the neighborhood that I knew, then I had to get head up fights and then they didn't want that. You know what I'm saying? So it was, it, it was that kind of situation. So, were, were there gangs at Horseman in the early 70s? Yeah, it was a West, it was Crips. You, you had the Baby Crips and you had the West Side Crips. Then you had, you had, uh, the 90s, you had the Baker Boys with Snoop and was uh, claiming that shit. But it was, uh, but you had, uh, yeah, it was like basically West Side Crips and the Baby Crips. You know, that was the whole blanket of the West Side, pretty much. Okay, so we up to speed now, so I'm going to get both of y'all back in here now. So now we're at a period where we're, we're no longer bishops and we're trying to find our identity. What made you guys gravitate towards being Crips? Who pulled you guys into that? Who who was you, your crews? Yeah, everybody the over there was Crips. Yeah, who, 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 who was your Crip influence in the Crenshaw district that made you guys go that route? Tookie had the influence over, the, over the, the pretty much the city. But... Keeping it real, yeah. Raymond had came over there. Yeah. Raymond had came over into the hood. Raymond, yeah. Raymond Washington, rest in peace. And he came to the hood for what? And to who? He came over, we, we was hanging out at Rip's house over on Matt. Oh, man, yeah. You know? And he came over there and, uh, no, 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 no. We was hanging out over there, but we was also hanging on 4th Avenue at the shack. Yeah, at Google Shack. At Google Shack. Oh, 4th Avenue. Uh, he Bell, seen how Bell. tight our little situation, how tight we were. But you guys were, at that time, a, a, you guys didn't have a name for y'all group. So what made Raymond even function with you guys at well, that time? But, see, no. but look, look, so, like, but this, this is this how I see it, right? Like, like when all that was going on, the West Side Crips, just had, you know, you had Terry Man, you know, like I say, he was the godfather. They was, they was West Side Crips, all that. But when, when when the neighborhood Crips came to the West Side, because actually, from from my remembrance, Tookie was like saying everybody was going to be such and such Crips on the West Side. We young, face them young, slew them, all that. We was like, can't no, I ain't saying this to be disrespectful for nothing. But we was, we was like, you know, we got to have our own identity. You know what I'm saying? So, and then, you know, the most common name was neighborhood Crips, right? So, you know, they was already started up on the east side. But then we had to distinguish ourselves from all the other neighborhoods. Because you had the undergrounds, you had you had the in-neighborhood families. You had neighborhood was just a common name at that time to be thrown thrown in. And we had a, was up in the hundreds. Yeah, up in the hundreds. We had already went through about a, a I call it like a little phase with the West Side Avenues. You know what I'm saying? So, and, so who... who 
who brought neighborhood to the Crenshaw district? Who whose idea was that? But see, the, but that's where it's get murky because well, let's like, get murky. Let's, but let's, see, let's, but see, like, like I mean, it was a general name because I, cause that's why I was asking his brother because I they brought it to me, right? They brought it to us neighborhood, but that was kind of like a, just a blanket. It was just neighborhood Crips West Side. When you say they, you got to be specific, bro. Well, I mean, you know, like Face them and Rick them, they brought it to us. Cal them, you know, it was just I don't know where how neighborhood got over there, but I, all I know is this. After the Avenue's little situation, about six months with, with Sunshine Ran, it was just a little uh, experiment. We was West Side neighborhood. Raymond Potts had some influence on us, too. Yeah, with the 6 5 neighborhood. Okay. Right? They was already neighborhoods. So before you guys even thought about being neighborhoods, Raymond Potts was already a neighborhood. Yes. He was 6 5. Yeah, six, five, and he, five was, he was another dude that was a, like the godfather in that area with Odie Shaw and them, but they were 6 5. But, but still at all, to be distinguished on on the on, on the sixties, we wasn't a part of that. You know what I'm saying? So we had to distinguish ourselves from that. And I'm not gonna let that get anywhere. I, I'm, you know I'm, 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 I'm gonna get into that. I'm, I'm gonna timeline it. I wanna okay. go. I wanna go back to Raymond Washington coming on Madden. Tell me more about that. Raymond, this is after we were we were sixties now. We was oh, this is a, a, after you guys already turned six. Yeah, okay, we turned six. And he's seen now how close we was, how tight we was. We was a group. We functioned as a group real well. We kept all, I mean, this is a big mistake we had. We kept our, our arsenal in one spot. They did, we did. <laughs> we did, when we first saw, yeah. Group was and any, and at the shack, anybody can come get one. You guys had multiple shacks in the hood, right? No, no. But at Goomba this time, Goonga shack, shack was the shack. That was the on shack. On 4th Ave and 7th. I mean, you know. That was the shack. Right down the street from White Mountain. Was that headquarters back then? Yeah, that was it, that, that was one of the thoroughways because you got to keep this in mind. Fourth Ave, when you come across Florence, Fourth Ave is like the main street to go from Florence all the way down to Slauson. So that was the main street that goes all the way through. That's why Fourth Ave was so important. You know what I'm saying? Because that took you through the heart of the hood pretty took much the Southwest, at, at right. that particular time. Right. You know what I mean? The hood was big, but it wasn't as big as it is now. You know what I mean? I see. And a, a lot of activity used to come through that, come down floor and forth there. That's a lot of activity was right there, you know? So, so, Especially in the Wood family. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to get into them. Slu, what year were you born? 56, 1956. And what about your your, your baby brothers? Uh, Face was born in 57, and Jewel was born in 59. Okay. So... Let me just get this out there, Stone. Okay. So, after you guys left the bishops, I just want to get it on record. Who were the big, big name Crips in the neighborhood at that time before you guys became Roll of Sixties? Before that, who, who were who were the, the older Crips? Odie, rest in peace. Odie Shaw, uh, Gary Manuel. Uh, Diego, Lupe, they little crew, that little crew, they was over in Africa. Uh, Billy Ray, Billy Ray ran the big Snoop brother. Um, let me see. There's a couple more older cats over there. Um, New house. Sunny. What, 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 New, uh, New House coming. Patrick Hill. New House, uh Oh, Clarence. I forgot about him. And what what's Patrick said on the corner of uh Harris and sixty seven? Down the street from Kyle. But I mean, yeah, two so, men in the So so the, 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 these names that you just listed off. Were these older guys socializing with you guys, mingling with you guys, or they were just the older guys in the neighborhood? The guys in the neighborhood, those older kids. So they had their scene, and you guys had your scene. Is we that, were, you know, because they would come over to Squally's house, or we'd be on 10th Avenue or something, they'd come over there. But, uh, you know, we all knew each other. We okay. lived there, you know, we would go over to Fred house. This is later on. Okay, so now we're back on Arlington. Okay. Who all lived on Arlington in the early 70s? 
Ooh, boy. You want me to go through it? <laughs> I want the roll call of the uh, early I mean, 70s. I mean, who lived on there or who hung out over there? Both. Okay. Who lived on there? And, and, and all of certain uh, people became uh, relevant uh, at different times. Early, early 70s only. Early 70s, it don't matter. Okay. You know what I'm saying? But look, I mean, before you want to name the kids or the future game bangers or, or the one that was game banging at the time. But over there, you had you had um, uh, K-Dog, Mumbles, Big Rick, Doe Eye, uh, Tyrone. You had all the Springers. It might be 15 in that one house, but you got like a bunch of brothers out of that house. You know what I'm saying? Uh, then you had uh, Doe Eye. You had uh, Lil No Good. You had uh, uh, Ronnie Pace, Ray Pace, uh, Kid, both kids. You had Battle Kingdom that really wasn't banging at that time. So it was just a lot of these. Then you had the people like me around the corner from Second Ave, because they come like you know Second Ave used to be hot with Mark Bolden them before they went caught their case, you know Bucking them, uh, all that. But they didn't really hang out on Arlington. But the ones that hung out on Arlington was, of Second Ave was just me, Tommy McCoy, briefly. You know what I mean? But Tommy did his shit. It was, it, you just you just had a lot of people. You had a uh, then I feed C Dub used to hang over there, Pie Face. It was just a lot of us. Yeah. Isn't C Dub and Big Rick related? They cousins. Yeah, they cousins. You know, they cousins. All right, so we're, we're going to go back to you. Well, well, yeah, yeah, I'm going to turn this to Jill.